Hi, I'm Deanna Springer. And I'm Dana Casey with a fun Stitch It Sisters sewing project and classic time-saving tips by Nancy Zeman. Thank you for joining us today. We're excited to be launching season two of Stitch It Sisters with our monogrammed Christmas stocking project featuring applique. We'll be making our new Christmas stocking with Weld at Heart Fabrics by Lori Whitlock for Riley Blake Designs, pre-made piping, Clover's Bias Tape Maker, Pellon Fleece and Wonder Under, size 90 denim sewing machine needles, and our new monogrammed Christmas stocking pattern. Make one or more of our monogram Christmas stockings and personalize your holiday decor with applique letters and background frame, both included with our new monogram Christmas stocking pattern. Next, we'll prepare the stocking pattern. Within the pattern, the Christmas stocking pattern, you'll find the pattern for the Christmas stocking. And you need to tape that together and tile it together. And we show you how to do that in the pattern. And then you create, once it's taped together, the full size, generous sized Christmas stocking. And then we need to cut out our fabrics. So I'll just move our fabrics over. We've already prepared them for the sewing process. And we need to cut out some fabrics. So we take our pattern and then cut out our fabrics. And you need a front and a back. And you have to be mindful that, the, that uh, the front is going to be sewn to the back. So you want to make sure that your fabrics are right side together and you cut a wrong uh, facing backing that matches your front fabric. And you could make it reversible. You're the designer. You could decide to face the toe to the left or the right and you could decide which fabrics is the front or the back. Okay. It's really a reversible stocking. You, the back has no monogram, but it's also the other front. So could you flip the pattern paper over as well? Mm -hmm. and just, that? just flip the pattern over. I, the, the first one I cut two of the same, and that didn't work <laughs> so well. So then that's when I decided put my front fabric wrong sides together with my, my stocking back fabric okay. and cut. Cut out a pair, an opposing pair for each stocking. And uh, we give you the yardage and information to make three stockings because we spelled out joy, J-O-Y, um, to really de decorate for the holiday season. Yes. So you've cut out your front and back. You need two lining pieces. And the same thing applies. You need a, a back and a front that ma match uh, wrong sides together so you have an opposing set. That's the lining, the inner stocking. Okay. You want the inner stocking finished as well as the outer <laughs> stocking. And then we need to give the fabric some body. So this is uh, Pallon Soft Shape Interfacing. Again, cut two opposing layers. And this is just for the outer stocking. We don't need to apply any interfacing to the uh, inside lining of the stocking. Okay. And then we want to give the, lining, uh, the stocking some loft. So we've cut two layers of Pallon Fleece. And this felon fleece is sewn and it's reversible. So just cut two. You don't have to worry about opposing so with the fleece. No opposing mm -hmm. directions on mm -hmm. the fleece. <laughs> and we also need to cut some squares for our applique. And we'll get to that in just a little bit. Let's start by fusing the interfacing to the back of the outside fabric. So I'll, I'll hand you the outside fabric. Okay. And you just align the fusible side, the rough side. The rough side the rough side of the interfacing to the wrong side of the outer stocking, the front and the back. And then head to the ironing board and use a press cloth and a fine mist spray bottle into steam and press and steam and press those fabrics together. Yes. And once that's uh, sewn together, we'll set yours aside over the pattern okay. and let's work on this side. The next step would be to cut some applique fabrics. Okay. So I've made it easy. With the pattern comes printables, and let's show those. And th this is a frame. It's the frame that goes behind mm -hmm. the applique to really accent that applique. And we also give you letters, but there's more. The entire alphabet is included with the pattern. So we've included the alphabet numbers, and they're backwards intentionally, because when we trace them on the wonder under, uh, that's the way they need to be for when, for when we fuse it into place, then they become reversed. And we've also included numbers. 
maybe not for this project, but then you have a set of applique letters and numbers for uh, future projects too. Very good. So we'll, then because they're already reversed, we don't have to flip the paper over and mm -hmm. forget to do that. Hold and it up to a letters. window, <laughs> yeah. right? Wait for a sunny day and put it on the glass and trace <laughs> it reverse. No, we've already reversed them for you. And we need to cut some of uh, fabric shapes for our applique. So we've cut four inch squares for the letters and six inch square for the background frame. And we've used a little print that uh, has uh, Marian Bright and different Christmas sayings on it. You could use a solid fabric, but it's really pretty to use that fabric. And we have another fabric, a solid off-white fabric. And that uh, comes into play later. That won't be seen on the outside of the stocking, okay. but it will help block, it will help mask the shadow through of the oh, stocking pattern good. because we have a nice bold print for our stocking that helps um, hide that. And then we need some wonder under. Paperback fusible web, and I've done the same thing. I've cut four inch squares and six inch squares. And there goes our pattern. <laughs> I just place the six inch square of wonder under over the frame pattern and I trace and I trace all the way around and you get the idea. You could use a circle for this or a square but we wanted to dress it up a little bit and make a, a nice scrolling frame. We call it a frame but it's you know a background for okay. the uh, applique pattern and then we'll trace our number. Actually a letter. Or number, you could do 25 <laughs> stockings and have 25. We're 12 days of Christmas and <laughs> okay. make 12 stockings. I was a little All too right. ambitious. <laughs> we'll, we'll wait for that next year, your 12 days of uh, Christmas stockings. And then trace the O. And again, I'm tracing on the smooth side of that uh, paperback fusible web. The um, rough side or the bumpy side actually has the glue on it. And you won't be tracing on slanty boards. So your, <laughs> uh, your monogram applique will be a little bit better than that. And then we have an extra square of fusible. And we've cut two. One that we've traced the, the um, frame on and one that we've traced the letter O on. And we also need to cut a second one. And I have it here. We've cut a second six inch, inch square uh, for the frame, but we don't need to trace this. Okay. I'll hand the pattern back to you. Thank you. We need to fuse. So we'll head to the ironing board and we'll fuse the fabric that will show on the front of the stocking. We'll flip that over and we'll fuse. And there's no uh, frame. We've not traced a frame on mm -hmm. this. So we'll fuse that on the back of the outer fabric, the frame fabric, and then we'll peel away that backing. Okay. And we'll press our solid square of fabric. Okay. And that causes the blocking effect so you don't see the stocking coming through. Very good. So but you make we, a little sandwich out of the fabric, the wonder under, and the second piece of fabric. Right. And then we take the frame tracing and press that into place. Use a dry iron mm -hmm. and an applique pressing sheet to prevent any glue from getting on your ironing board or your iron. Press that in place, let it cool, and then we cut it out. The next sample shows that we've started cutting it out. So we have the frame cut out, and you'll finish cutting that out, and cut out your letter. So we've cut out the letter J here. And then once you have this cut out, we'll head to the ironing board and we'll place that. We'll place that with a, a five and one sliding gauge about uh, three and a half, four inches down from okay. the top. And we'll do that over at the ironing board and press that into place. Again, using that applique pressing sheet to protect mm -hmm any glue from getting on your iron. And once you have that fused into place, our next sample here shows that fused all into place. And that's not going anywhere, but mm -hmm. we wanna finish that off. We want to take and stitch around at the sewing machine with an applique stitch. Okay. So you select a zigzag sewing stitch and shorten the length a little bit, maybe down to 0.5. Okay. It depends on your machine. So it's nice and tight. Right, and it doesn't have to be tight like a satin stitch. Okay. Uh, just enough to hold it in place and give it a little uh, stitching accent and shine. And classic time-saving tip by Nancy Zeman, stitch around outer curves to turn the corner, stop with the needle down mm -hmm. in the outside fabric. 
when you're stitching inner curves, stitch and pivot with the needle on the inside of the fabric. Okay. And you can see as we're stitching, it's nice and fluid and it makes uh, turning those corners smooth. Next up, we'll add some piping to our stocking and we'll just be attaching it to the front of the stocking. And we like to use pre-made uh, piping. It's just super handy, it's already made. And the color works really well with the stockings we're making, but you could make your own custom color stocking from just uh, bias cut fabric strips and some cording. But you'll need a piping foot. We like to use the piping foot. It's a presser foot that has a groove on the bottom of the foot that accommodates the bulk of that piping. So when you stitch, that piping foot glides right along and you can't, uh, you can't jump that bump and accidentally sew where you're not supposed to. It glides right along there. Very good. So I've just placed the piping cut edge with the stocking cut edge. And I've stitched. At the sewing machine you can see we're stitching all the way around the stocking. Once you've stitched the piping to the stocking, we'll imagine that we've done it on this sample. Okay. It's time to line the stocking. So to line the stocking, we need our lining pieces. And we'll just place our stocking. I know you have my stocking front. Oh. I have your stocking Oops. back. <laughs> <laughs> and it's, it's, it's directional because the stocking has a toe and a heel. We need to be mindful of the, the direction of the, the lining. So you place the lining right sides together to the front of the stocking. And then we pin. We pin here and then we'll take it to the sewing machine and we'll stitch. We'll stitch just the very top of that stocking seam and then we'll stop. We'll press that seam open and we'll press at the ironing board. And then the optional step would be to, to top stitch this in place or edge stitch. A classic time-saving tip by my longtime friend Nancy Zeman, edge stitch this or understitch it. Okay. Stitch on the lining side right along the edge of the fabric. What that does is keep the lining fabric in place inside the stocking when it's right side out. Oh, okay. So that's an extra uh, tip that is handy for, for a professional looking stocking. So we have our front stocking stitched to our front lining. Now we need to do the same thing to the back. So we'll have our back stocking and we didn't attach our fleece to our our, our uh, back stocking, but you get the idea. Same thing. We'll match the right side of the stocking top to the right side of the stocking lining. And we'll stitch that seam just like we did along the front. But we need to add a little element to the back. In order to hang our stocking on the fireplace, we need a hanging loop. So we use a bias tape maker, a one inch Clover's one inch bias tape maker. And we just pull that through at the ironing board and press. Okay. And then I just cut a little six inch uh, portion of the folded bias tape. And it's actually okay. not bias, I straight cut that. It's just a two inch by six inch strip of fabric for each okay. stocking. And then head to the sewing machine and stitch. Okay. Stitch along the edge of both of those both sides. sides. Okay. And then we have a loop. It's just a stitched uh, a strip of fabric that we tuck into the seam and tuck that in near the back. And I put it in about a half an inch, five okay. eighths of an inch. You want it in far enough, but you don't want it in too far. And make sure it's between the lining and the, the stocking back. And I clip that with a Jumbo Wonder Clip to hold that in place. That also reminds me that it's in it's there. In there. <laughs> mm -hmm. So then we stitch that seam just like we did with the front. Okay. And then we open it up and press at the ironing board. And again, understitch, understitch that seam to keep that uh, lining fabric tucked into okay. place. Now it's time to sew the stocking together. So we'll meet right sides together, the stocking back to the stocking front, and we'll pin We'll pin all the way around the edges. And your, your stocking would actually be sewn. Ours is just pinned for now. <laughs> and then we clip, wonder clip, or pin, 
around the edges. Or both. Right? Sometimes we mix it up and do a little of each. And we stitch all the way around. We'll head back to the sewing machine. And because the piping is in the front of the stocking, mm -hmm. we'll stitch that with a piping foot. Okay. So we'll start by stitching the front. And I like to take a marking pen and place a little mark. Feel where the piping is and mark right on the, st the stocking uh, fleece where that bump is. That helps okay. me align the, the piping foot along the, the bump of the piping and then easily stitch all the way around. Okay. And there's, there are nice gradual, cur gradual curves on our stocking that you can easily stitch that. Now if you have a little bit of bulk here when you're stitching the piping front uh, to the, all the side seams, you can use a little helper to help you over that uh, seam. Now we need to stitch the lining to the lining, but we need to leave an opening on the back seam of the stocking, leave a six inch opening. And you could mark that as a no sew zone. So maybe add an extra wonder clip if you're using pins, something to let you know, do not stitch that <laughs> seam shut or you'll be reverse stitching with a seam ripper. Well versed in reverse stitching. Mm -hmm. I like that. <laughs> Everyone that sews has, has experience with reverse stitching. Next, we'll head to the sewing machine and we'll put on an ordinary presser foot. We'll stitch all the way around that stocking and leave that open. Okay. And before it's turned right side out, we like to put a little Clover's fusible tape. So a little six inch section right within the seam allowance and press that in place with an iron. Remove the paper backing right before uh, you, you seal it shut or you could hand stitch it. But I do have a stocking right side out here. I'll hand this over. It's actually wrong sides out. And you can see that in the curves, I've taken it to the cutting board and I've used a 45 millimeter rotary cutter with a pinking blade and I've just pinked in those tight curved areas. You could clip those curves, but the pinking blade works really great. It is slick, yes. Mm -hmm. And I don't, I don't need to do that in the straight seam areas, but you certainly okay. could. Sure. And you can see here's our six inch Clover's Wonder Tape, fusible tape. And then we can turn this right side out and see the magic. So here's our stocking, here's our fusible tape paper. And it emerges our monogram Christmas stocking. And you can just turn that right side out. And you can get in there with a, a clover point to point turner. So in those curved areas, we'll put the point to point turner in there. And I'll let you hold that and just push that out. And it gives you a nice, mm -hmm. crisp, well, crisp curve, I guess. <laughs> right. And it naturally turns right side out. And of course, you'll do some pressing. And then this is where we head to the ironing board. We remove that paper backing from that opening and press that shut. The last step is to turn the stocking lining to the inside. And you can spend a little time getting that nice and smooth in there. I've really had fun making the Christmas stockings this year. It's the first time we've uh, introduced uh, monogram mm -hmm. and applique into our stocking a series that we do annually in November. Um, and it was just uh, really fun. We've had a lot of viewer comments that were asking for some applique projects. Yes. And the nice roomy stocking, you can get some pretty uh, significant stocking stuffer gifts within your stocking. Very nice. And I really like this technique of making it this way rather than making a separate lining from the outer stocking. And then you don't necessarily have to have a seam around here and you don't have to worry about tucking and sewing back over all those layers. It's right. nice and flat. and Flat construction is the mm -hmm. key. We hope you've enjoyed the Stitch It Sisters project. You'll find this pattern along with a limited number of bundle boxes at stitchitsisters.com. Be sure to tune in again for another Stitch It Sisters sewing adventure. In the meantime, connect with Stitch It Sisters and friends on our social sites. Stitch It Sisters is made possible by Bernina, Clover, 
Pellon, Riley Blake Designs, OESD, and ShopNZP.com. Bernina, made to create.